conducive to good riding. It's not gonna help. Me. Oh, honey, you can't see. I'm trying to keep the wind out you, of you your eyes. You need this. You need this for the wind. <laughs> so today we're gonna put some wind under our wings. <laughs> <You too. laughs> we're gonna put some wind under our wings, and we're gonna be riding a, a project horse. You guys have not seen this one yet. No, I did So I'm Jeremy. I'm Macy. <laughs> this is Piper. Oh. She's scared. Oh. <laughs> Piper, don't be scared. So Piper, Piper. is a four-year-old. Um, we're gonna work on some hip control stuff. We're gonna show you some good, some bad, and some ugly, hopefully today. Yes. Um, and show you how we're gonna work through it. Um, Piper is a invitation-only style of horse. No, come over here. So you block it with your body. No, no, you, you're here. <laughs> you're here. Right. All right, all right, all right. Oh so my goodness. So block it with our body a little bit. There you go. Perfect. So Piper is an invitation-only. Um, just don't touch it. There you go. Um, invitation only four-year-old so that she is going to be a little bit tough in her hips by nature um, she's a paint daughter of invitation only so she's gonna be tough in her hips we talked a lot about hip control in the last couple videos um, that's good right there perfect all right um, talked a lot about hip control in the last couple videos but we didn't really get a chance to show you on horses that are new to it right, right? so she's, she's pretty new to Piper's it. fairly new to it um, <laughs> she's not been ridden outside much so she's gonna be a little bit fresh and looky yeah she's um, looky. we have a greenhouse right here that has like yeah Plastic. plastic. A lot of plastic on the yeah. roof. And just go and it just, the whole time. Like flying a kite above your horse. So that's <laughs> very good to get your horse broke. Um, <laughs> it is. They'll, so, be, they'll be ready for their drone then. That's right. Yeah. It's drone training. It's <laughs> it drone, training. drone training. And Congress training. So when they walk around the Congress grounds, yeah, they're used to the flags scary. whipping and stuff. That is terrifying. <laughs> Awful. Um, so we'll do some hip control it's, stuff it's, today on this one. Um, hello, Bonnie. Hey, Bonnie. Uh, <laughs> do some hip control stuff. We'll do. Um, We'll do some right lead stuff, but she's really good to the right and she needs more work to the left. Yep. So she's very tight to the left. Remember, you got two sides of your horse. So remembering that uh, sometimes they're gonna be good, sometimes they're gonna be bad. Usually what happens is one direction ends up being a bit of time behind your other one. Yep. So we could look at it and be like, well, you know, her right lead is probably a month, month and a half ahead of her left lead. Yeah. All right. And that's, able to see that. that's where you end up sometimes. So for whatever reason, could be the horse, could be the way she's made, could be her own mind, um, a lot better to the left or the right than the left. Yeah. We're getting cold in the wind I'm now. Getting cold. Yeah, I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna grab my jacket because this is a little cold. I say, are you serious? You take your vest off? No, no, no. I'm gonna put my jacket back on. He's crazy, um, crazy. So what do we what do we do last night, Mish? What happened? Well, we gave away three sets of spurs. So how how did we end up giving away three sets of spurs? I thought it was only gonna be one. It was only gonna be one. Yeah, no, it's supposed to be one no, set of spurs. No, I I made this. We have a lot of plans, so we did three sets of spurs last night, and then I said if we hit 150 people on Patreon page. Then we're gonna give away custom spurs with their names on it. Custom so, engraved silver spurs. And we talked about like that last night, so that is going to happen. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> um, so that'd be really cool. But we end up giving away. Get all my stuff gathered up here. I know that wind, though. I feel you. It's terrible. Um, it's awful. I ended up giving away two sets of spurs that. Uh, Three sets of spurs. Well, two sets because we can't oh, ship one. I'll show you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but don't say that. Um, so the spurs that we have. Um, <laughs> The spurs. <laughs> don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. <laughs> so, the spurs we give away, we gave away two sets to <laughs> two sets of people that like the video, and then um, one set to our, our first responder. We need a code name. First responder <laughs> healthcare people. So, thank you so much to our healthcare people, yes, thank our frontline you. warriors here. Um, Want to support those guys. Yes. So, um, we'll do more giveaways. Obviously, the more we grow this deal, the bigger we get, the more we can do for you guys. Um, so your yeah. your likes, your follows, your subscribes, your shares, all that. North Dakota on hello. Facebook and YouTube that helps us a ton. Yep. All right. It's windy and cold. It's and windy. It's windy, but it's, it's not beautiful. cold. It is, it's just, it is beautiful. It's just like, super windy. If there was no wind, it would be like tank top. Day. Yeah. Yeah. It's gorgeous. It's <laughs> just really windy. Um. So we'll do. We got coming up this week. Much. No. Hopefully merch comes this week. Quarantine. <laughs> Hopefully merchandise comes this week. We can test that out. Yeah. See what we like. We it, don't shipped, like it. it shipped two days ago, so it should be here by now. Yes. Should and be here today. we talked to some people on stream yesterday that do um, embroidering. Embroidery, and they work for graphic people. So if you were one of those people, send us a message. Yes. We'd we'll love to be in touch with your co your company if you guys are open. Yep. Um, and hopefully we can arrange it that Work way. something out. That'd yes. be really awesome. Yes. And we'll have to do that. Yep. So that would be really good. Um, then maybe we can get the source a little closer to home. Yeah, that'd be nice. I don't, I don't the, know where this is coming from. I have no idea. The shipping time is killing us, though. It's taking a long it's time. It's way too long. Yep. So, yeah. Mm, only need 34 more sign up. I know. Thoughts. 34 I more know. people. How yes. do you sign up? You can go to www.patreon.com slash LSH Live. Yes. And you can sign up for a dollar, $10, 25 So let's uh, we'll up today. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Very good, Stacy. Um, so the only thing, if you sign up towards the end of the month, 
Like today you still have, there's a bit of time, but time. if you're signing up like on the 28th or something, I, I believe you can get billed twice. I think that's the way Patreon works. So you can get billed yeah. to the first and then again. So you could always wait. Yep, the first. you could always wait. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, awesome. Bonnie. Very good. Couldn't do with that. <laughs> um, yes, there's our, our resident moderator from it Canada. <laughs> it's yes, perfect. she's the unofficial official that's moderator. That's so exciting. I'm so happy you guys are joining. Yes, thank you Yay. so much for supporting us. Um, and what we do here, trying to make everybody a better rider. Yeah. And come out of the quarantine better than we started, right? Yeah. That's the goal. Whoa, whoa, fun. All right. Oh, okay. She tried. <laughs> she tried. She thought about Good it. Good luck. All right. Well, let's ride this thing. Let's see where we're at. She's ready to get working. I'm going to take this real quick. I'll take it from you. Okay. Hand. I'm not blinded. So we move down where we're on the wind a little bit. All right. Are you going to work down here? Okay. You're so welcome. All right. So we've been talking a lot about hip control. We've been talking a lot about, whoa, um, talking a lot about the green horse, right? So we have a bit of a green horse here. Um, Wait, she... one second. I'm gonna turn this mic around towards you. Hold on a second, guys. I think we're good now. One Should second. Let me get my glove back on. Yep. I'm gonna get my blocker out. Yep. Okay, good. All right, so we talked a lot about hip control in the last couple of videos. Um, I wanted to get a horse out that's not very good at it, right? That doesn't give him up willingly so you guys could see that. And you'll see how I respond to it and the way I'm gonna teach her and train her to give her hips up willingly because you gotta have willingness, all right? So the big thing that I notice about this horse, and every horse is different, right? Um, they're all gonna have to know the same maneuvers. They're all gonna have to be broke the same way, but they're all gonna handle the teaching process differently. So we have a little bit tougher mare here. Um, if you look at kind of the way she's made, if you just evaluate, she's made like right there. Did you see her head flip up? She's kind of made to do that. That's kind of been her way of evading uh, problems or things that she doesn't want to do is to turn his head upside down and get this. Let's see that right there. That's where she likes to be. So when we got her in the beginning, she wanted to turn her head upside down really bad. We are not going to beat up her face for that though. We're going to teach her to elevate her back, right? So teaching her how to lift her belly is going to help her drop her neck in. Go ahead. Uh, Jeffrey said, just curious, what type of mouthpiece in a bit do you prefer? Uh, sweet iron or copper, et cetera? Ooh, probably sweet iron. I said, what is this one? This is sweet iron. Yep. 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 I like sweet iron. I have a copper snaffle. Hello, Kathy. It's pretty good. It starts to wear out quicker though. Right, copper is a really soft material, so um, my copper twist started out pretty big and it's getting kind of thin. So, thank you, Hattie. Yep, and you want to watch. I think when you get copper bits, if they chew on them, you want to watch for burrs, right? Oh, yeah, like they can chomp on it with their teeth and they'll put a little spike in it, put a little burr in it, and you can cut their cheek up with that. Did that happen to our one copper twist we had? Yep, so kind of a word of caution about copper bits, um, at least in my experience, is they get they can chew on them and they can they can punch them, right? They can punch them, so, <laughs> yep. We can punch through and make a little burr. So always have to watch for that. Um, if you're getting some rawness on your cheeks, check the check your bits, right? Like it's not necessarily your hands or what you're doing, but our our bit just end up a little bit of a just a little spike. little like poking it, a little spike. A little burr. So so yeah, sweet iron for me then. Um, but yeah, my I'm in my D ring, twisted snaffle, my favorite bit of all time. Um, good working bit. This horse kind of pulls on my hands a little bit. She kind of leans into me. We're gonna allow her to do that because she's learning to sit in our hands, right? So before she would fall, or she would always invert and get away from the bit. She might do some of that to the left, but to the right now she keeps her neck down, but she's pulling on my hands kind of hard. So I'll show you how I'm gonna work through that um, for the time being, because we don't wanna do a lot of backing up on this horse in the beginning, because I think when you start backing a horse in the beginning, you end up taking away a lot of forward. And you'll see when I go to lope off to the left, how this horse does not have the correct way to move forward. So I want to make sure I have that in there first. All right. That forward's going to keep me safe. It's going to keep her correct. So I don't want to get rid of that right in the beginning. All right. I don't mind having her sit and be a little bit forward right now while she learns shape and learns to keep her neck down. Okay. So just one of those things about like this horse in particular, the way she's made, the way she reacts to problems, she likes to be up here and she gets a little bit stubborn. So uh, hopefully we can see some of that and I'll show you the things that I ignore and the things I'm going to fix. All right. So this is the horse we're gonna demonstrate some counter canter stuff on. Um, hopefully we get that far. If you guys watch the video of Dubs doing counter canters, um, he was a bit better at it than this horse absolutely will be. Um, 
we've we've not done much counter camping at all. I'm yeah, and we're gonna do a lot of hip around stuff too. A lot of hip around, right? And show you how to work through it because we had a lot of people tell us about how their horse gets anxious, it gets nervous, it gets mad, and won't lope off or whatever. And this horse does all of those things, right? So, and it's certainly better than it was. But so, a little background on her. We've had her in training for probably four or five months, um, giving her some breaks in between now and then. Um, she gets a little bit too worked up, we get a little bit of time off. But um, typical mare, right? A little bit tougher minded, invitation only bred. Um, paint daughter, invitation only. So, gonna be a little bit tougher minded. Um, and then the year before this, she came to us. I don't think she's been loped much at all, but a lot of walk trot. A lot of walk trot, yep. So, this will be kind of similar to what your guys' horses are, where if you do a lot of walk trotting on them, um, you start to build up your lope, but now she's confident in her walk trot. She's kind of nervous about the lope. So we've made the lope a big deal in her world. And I don't want to make the lope a big deal. So if I had this horse from a two year old or from her three year old year when we started, we'd be loping day one. Doesn't mean we're going to lope lap after lap after lap. We're just going to touch on it so she's not nervous to do it. Okay, go ahead. Uh, this horse is four, right? Four year old. Yep. yep, it's a four year old. Four year old. Um, and you guys haven't seen her before, so. Nope, she's new. Yep. Yep. Her name's uh, Piper. <laughs> yep, this is Piper. So we can get started. I'll, I'll kind of warm her up, run you through my warm up. Hopefully your guys' warm ups at home are starting to look like this. Hopefully you're starting to see all the things um, that we're doing with them. It's been cool to see your guys' videos and see your horses change. So hopefully you're following along and, and your horses are changing just as much as ours are. All right. So first things first, always going to back up, make sure I have a horse whose so shoulders come softly to me. All right. Now that this horse gives her shoulders up, I can split my hands and drop her neck down. Okay. Didn't used to be that way. You can ask her owner. She used to flip her head upside down and quit on me. So um, everybody that had the horses who's just flip up here and you can't get her to back up and give their shoulders, this was the same horse, right? So right here, back, right here, give me your shoulders. There, give me your shoulders. Good. And she tried for a little bit backing really fast. So we just stayed backing up, let her slow down, let her think her way through it. Um, you're going to see all this stop, reach down, pet him. Okay, so you're licking chew. So we're still trying to create that willing student in this horse where she comes out here and she wants to work hard for us, all right? Because she's a mare, which is a little bit different than all the geldings we've been showing. And mares, you gotta kinda work with them, all right? You can't work through a mare. It's gotta be her idea, okay? So we always want her to know when she's doing a good job because that's gonna win us the long battle with a mare. And we're not gonna come out here and just be super- Aw, your mom's on, Holly's on. <laughs> Miss you, Holly. So right here, we're gonna be going along. We're gonna drop her neck down, so that's that wide shuffle, right? So you see me take up on my hands right here. I'm like this, this is where this horse likes to be. We're gonna shuffle wide and drop her down. So see me hold one, work the other out wide, all right? So holding one rein, working the other wide just like this. This is how I'm gonna drop that neck down, all right? So you'll see me be able to do that when I lope too. Holding one rein, tapping the other. See how I just pick that rein up to my, my midline. See how we don't have any bend in this horse's neck, right? We are not untracking up there, okay? Staying really straight in her pull. That's what I want. So the ability to drop her in right here, you can see her neck drop. That's what I'm looking for, a break right here. Keep building this muscle, all right? So if Macy, if you want to go sideways here, yep. you'll be able to see the smooth muscle in this horse's neck, all right? So right here, if I hold one, tap the other out wide, just a little bit stiffer on this side. Horse went in, all right? There, drop in. This, see that hold, oh, too far. Whole neck engaged. If you don't see this whole neck engaged, if you just see this part bulging, you're doing it wrong, all right? So make sure you get their whole neck engaged. Drop them down like we're teaching here, we're training. I'm gonna work her so she stays down there, all right? I don't want her to go to level. And we talked to Stephanie about that last night, right? Dropping this horse below level so she learns to carry herself right there. See how she met me in the middle? That's what I want. So she's gonna give me what I ask for and then she's gonna take some back and she thinks she's gonna get away with something right here. But see how level that neck is? This is where I want her to stay. So remember, I worked her below level and she came back up to this, okay? So we'll walk her around. So the whole time I'm walking here, I'm just gonna kinda touch on her face, closing my spurs on her belly, making sure that she comes to me and she stays relaxed. So right here, shuffle down, right here, shuffle down. I want to know that I can put pressure on and she'll move into the pressure, right? She'll kinda seek the pressure, go ahead. Do you like the way her neck ties in? No. <laughs> nope, I don't. So it, that, that shape of her neck, right, where she likes to get upside down, I see that a lot in like your blazing hots, your hot and blazings, um, that kind of upside down neck. It doesn't mean much right now, right, because she's learning, but it's certainly going to be one of those things where, uh, where we're going to have to really work on that, right? 
We're gonna have to watch this horse that she doesn't get inverted in her neck and get this bottom side bulging out. Just something we're always gonna have to work on. Doesn't mean she won't make a show horse. Doesn't mean that, uh, that she's not gonna have good things about her, right? It's just something you gotta work on. So remember like found the, the fundamental aspect we're looking for here is that every horse can be broke. Regardless of how you're made, you can be broke. But what we have with this horse is that's going to be a natural tendency based on how she's made that she's going to want to flip her head up, all right? That's all that means. So some horses, their necks are tied in really low and you got to work on picking their head up all the time, all right? And that's just, that's just the way it is. So you're going to have both ways. You're going to have some horses you got to work on picking their necks up, some horses you work on keeping them down, right? But what I have to work on with this horse is rebuilding the muscle so she can learn to carry her neck in the right position. Right? And, and some of that has to do with where it ties in, and some of that's just her personality. But she just kind of wants to be up here and look around, right? Like a, a periscope. Yeah, she's like Peanut. Yep. Like likes to just be like up there a little bit. Yep. Yep. Kind of gets just periscopy. That doesn't, again, that doesn't mean much because we showed a horse on stream uh, a couple nights ago, Chrome. His neck was made the exact same way. Yeah. Right? And so he, she just likes this. Yep. This is where she likes to be. So that's how we end up building all this muscle up right down here. There, right there. This is comfortable for her, all right? So we are gonna reshape this muscle right here. This is years of practice right here. Years of work building this muscle down here, all right? We've only had her for a little while, so this three, four years of building up muscle, this three, four months of building up muscle, all right? So it's gonna take us a bit of time to get that neck reshaped, but it's just something we have to keep an eye on all the time. Yep, yep. we did the same thing with Peanut. Yep, same thing. Same thing with Chrome, his neck was made the same way. Yep. But we saw the video of him and he looked really good, so. Yep. It's not going to affect much. You'll see her low she looks really good. Uh, but it's just one of those things you have to keep your hands really low on a horse like this. You can't be bringing your hands up because you're going to get this. Right? And she's going to be above that bit. This is where she likes to be. So we're going to have to work hard on getting her to stay down and elevated and teach her to lift her back. Right? Teach her to lift her belly. So right there, coming along. So she likes, she's a hunt seat style of horse. Uh, She's really good legged, but she just likes the hunt seat better. So that's what we've kind of been focusing on. Uh, it's probably where she'll end up being her strongest events, the hunt seat and the egg. But um, right now, what we want to do is get her broke, all right? So I'm not looking for speed yet on anything that we're doing with this horse. I just want a nice like working pace right here, dropping her neck in, keeping her soft. You see like I'm going to be quiet when she's down. I'm going to work when she's up. And I'm just setting the beginning, right? Just setting my circle. So right here, drop this neck in. But see, when I drop her down, I'm dropping her way down, right? Drop her way down, let her find peace and quiet down there. Uh, we had somebody send us a video in, and like they were busy with their hands all the time. What I have to have this horse understand is, if you'll get down there, you'll get left alone, right? If you'll be down to my hands, and you'll sit down there in the bit, I'm gonna be really quiet, and you'll find peace down there. And that's what I want. I want her to trust my hands down there. Basically, my rule book is if your neck gets higher than this right here, if you pop up in your neck, you're going to meet my hand shuffling wide, right? So we put that button on at my walk and my standstill where I can hold my outside rein up and drop my inside rein down, right? So hold my left up, work my right down, you see her drop in right here, right between her shoulders. That's what I want, right? That button, we put that in when we were walking, okay? And you saw me testing that a lot when I was standing there talking to you guys. So I know that this button's gonna work all the time. Right? All the time, be able to take her, be loping along, shuffle my hands like that, and drop her in. Right? So all I want right now, push my buttons around, push my horse around a little bit, test my feet. Does she give her body to me? Does she get soft? Does she come around? Right? So this would be like, for me, this horse is like fifth or sixth grade. Right? So we're right there. We got a, a horse that died pretty well. We're gonna start taking a hold of some parts and pieces and push your body around, teach her some position. So we've already got self-carriage, we need position now. Cause she's got some holes in the way she lopes with carrying herself around and maintaining good shape, right? So right here, I'm gonna test my rib cage button, gonna slide down, push this over. You see her wanna elevate her neck. I gotta stay in, keep her trotting up until she drops in, right? So she didn't drop in yet. She's looking around, she's not paying attention to me. She watched that horse come in. I'm gonna keep her moving. All right, keep her moving. Keep trying to drop that in. There, there. That's what I want. Okay, go ahead. Um, do you always hold with the outside rein and work the inside? Most Hello, likely, Chris. Yes. Yep. 
most likely, because you're gonna see on this horse especially, like I was doing that, that rip control move right there, and she's leaking out over here. Okay, so that tells me I gotta work this left side more. All right, I got her pretty good off this side and she's going too far over there. So I gotta have more of a wall right here. Right, that's coming back to my turn right there. Back, turn. See that heads up. I'm not gonna shuffle that down. I'm gonna turn your phone down to disturb real quick. Oh yeah. One second, right. guys. Um, All right, so getting this horse where she can stay down in my hands. Perfect. That's what I'm looking for. So I gotta have control on both sides. And you'll see this horse, I don't have even control. So I got way more control on one side than the other. So right here, I'm gonna break her neck off. Right there, drop her neck in. Come around. Right here. And see, when I take a hold, try and take a hold softly and bring her to me. See, now she's staying down. So now, once she's down, you can work your hands up. All right, try to bring that jaw back up to us. But what I feel is I feel her leaking out this way. And that's what I felt when I was trotting that circle too. He's trying to leak out to the outside. Remember, we're trying to make a horse that leans on the outside. Leans on the outside rein, leans on the outside leg. So we made that problem to get that, that horse that's kind of up on the outside rein. So I can steer with my outside rein. Because I don't want to pull my inside and have her go that way. And that's how she came to us. So I don't want her to turn to the right when I take, oh, there's a little kick. So we gotta address that right away. I was trying to trot off, but we gotta push that around. So we'll get right to that hip control right away, right? So if she's gonna boot out at my foot like that, we'll come around, push it, and then we're out, right? We'll say, hey, that's not what I was looking for. So let's come over here. Remember getting that horse to where she'll accept your feet. That's the big deal. That's what we're going for in this next set of grades, right? So right here, we're gonna try to trot off again. Spurs in, bounce. See how I bounce my seat rather than kick. I don't want to kick her, especially a horse like this that tends to get really tight in her ribs, really bracy in her belly. I can't kick on her, okay? Because I'm going to make her more bracy. So this is, a, this is a horse that really benefited from bouncing her seat. And you'll see when I go low ball, uh, especially my left lead, she's going to brace up on me. She's going to hold still and not low ball, and then she's going to jump through it. So our left lead is ugly low ball, but it's better than it was, so we keep winning and moving forward, all right? Here. I'm gonna go low ball. I'm gonna break her down. Walk. We're gonna work on a transition. So here, over onto my left side, left leg close by, sit on my left spur. So see how I caught everything, and now I'm bringing it back to you guys right here. She's trying to get a little bit sideways. See me tapping my right foot, keeping everything lined up right here. That's that low off position. I'm looking for her to get on my left spur, not fall over to the right. Now because she's staying up off the right. Right here, I'm gonna start pressing my left leg a little bit harder. And I'm gonna get some step up into that. Now I got some sideways, I'm gonna push that around, <laughs> right? There's a little bit of pop, right? What did she try to do? Try to lock her withers away from me. Try to lock her front feet up, all right? So what am I gonna do? Break her neck off to the side, get her to drop down, try again, right here, right there. There, there. Stephanie said, when do you give them their head? When do I give her her head? Yep. Much later in the process much later in the process. Cause like for me, if I give her her head, I'm gonna end up with that horse I had right there, right? Where she's gonna pip, pop her neck up at me. So I'm gonna keep working this horse's head to the side, keep taking this away from her. Cause this is where she likes to have control, right? Every horse will be a little bit different in where they like to have control. What are you doing your phone? Blocking the wind from over there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so every horse can be a little bit different with where they like to have control. So I'm not gonna give her her head because to her, that's winning, right? She tries to take her head away from me, and we know that by looking at the way her neck is muscled. She's gonna try to elevate, come above that bit, try to lock those shoulders up. So we're gonna say, you can't do that. So I push her over, wrap my outside leg, try to set up this low buff again. So people had asked me, like my horse is nervous to low off, what do I do? Do this, right? Set her up to low off right here. Don't loaf if she's nervous. Get this to where she can kind of just softly sit right there. There, out. Reach down and pet her. I want her to be confident right there. So I'm gonna try it again. Wrap my outside right here, pushing her in. That's what I want. Then I'll kiss, right? So I'm gonna set up this loop off right up here. Going along. Nope. Good loop off. See how I just stayed working, right? So I'll set up on my circle. Right here. 
Chest things out. So I'm gonna set up. We're gonna go roll her over her hips, get her off my hands. So I'm gonna lean back, outside leg on, drive everything up, set her down, go straight. Right there. Phillip's watching you on a 65 inch TV. <laughs> That's awesome. Right here, make my corner. Little shuffle of my hands. You see on this horse, I open up my inside hand, just to tip over. Lean back, bring her shoulder to me. Set her down, ride straight. Let her practice, all right? We're kind of to the stage on this horse to the right where we start working on our straight lines. So I'm gonna go to a circle down here. Circle around. There, she's trying to come away from me so you hear me kiss. Drive her up. The only reason she's coming up with her neck is because she doesn't want to lift her belly. Right here, bring her shoulders up to me. Keep her neck down. Go straight now. Set her down between my feet. Right there. Good. Come around. Bring her shoulder to me. Set up. Neck elevated, so I'm going to my spurs here. My hand. where you've got to kind of hold that pressure and let her come to it, right? By staying on my circle, I can stay in until she gives it to me. So I'm loping along. Right here, I'm going to turn her over that circle again. And see, she gets lost when I go to turn. So here, turn again. Good, turn again. Good. And now straight. Come around, straight. Nope, gotta go back to my circles. She wasn't ready, right? That's that, turn that head upside down, leaving. Pick the shoulders up, come to me. Make a corner. Set her down, go straight. Keep your belly elevated as I go straight. Step around, make a corner. And like I'm riding and she's pulling on my hands a little bit, but not terrible. So I'm just gonna keep going. Drive through that, kiss, 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 kiss. Anytime my head turns upside down, kiss, 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 get that back end driving up. Both feet underneath of her, pull that belly up, because then she's gonna drop into my hands, right? Rather than fight it out with her head and neck, right there, I can stay soft handed and go to her belly and squeeze and get that roundness back in her. Come around. Now she tipped over right there. That's a good opportunity to shut her down. Push this over. Get her ribs up and off my right foot. Yeah, there's that little hole, right? She's worried about those horses. Stay here with me. Stay here with me. But see, I'm just real soft. Got my right foot on there. Push her around. She's giving me her hip, and I don't want her hip. I want her right front leg. I want her to drop and soften. Step over with your right front. Give me this rib control, all right? Give me this rib right here. You don't want to give that to me. See me, just stay here. Just stay here. Let her think your way through. Did you get mad? Let her think. Think your way through this. Don't just get mad and quit on me. Stay right here. Try, try, try stuff. Try different things. How about bring that right leg over your left? Right, how about right leg over left? Maybe try that. There. Drop out immediately, all right? So right there, that's what I want. So the second she gave me that foot over, I'm out. I'm done. I'm going to go to it again. We're going to try that button again. Right here. There. See, I just ignore all the stuff that she tried. Right? She tried all that goofy stuff. She tried looking around. She tried biting my foot. She tried kicking out, jumping around. But look, there. That's what I want. See that neck down nice and soft. We'll do it again. We'll go that same button. There. See? But you don't have to get aggressive. You gotta let her think and find her way through it. Find the correct answer. So she's still worried about them, we're gonna keep moving. Right? I'd love to stop and chat with you guys, but if she, if every time I put her down, she didn't worry about those other horses. There's horses coming in the back. Got horses coming in. Yep. She didn't worry about them. We're gonna keep working, right? I want you worried about what's going on right here. There. Nope. See her, those ears go back forward. And she gets upset. We'll go back to work. Right? But see how not getting aggressive right there let me keep practicing? 
and now I don't have a horse that's, that's fried, right? And I can keep going. So see, now I got those ears on me all the time. That's what I want, so I'm gonna reward her for that. There's my lick and chew, right? That's what I'm looking for. So getting your horse through those holes looks just like that, where you say, hey, I'm not gonna put up with that, but if, as long as that, like if I were to go right there and start kicking her really hard and getting mad about her not paying attention to me, then it's gonna be a battle of wills. Right. Right, like she's gonna be really upset at me, and it's gonna be whoever's tougher, all right? I don't want you guys to have to cowboy up, right? That's not the goal here. It's not the goal to try to beat our horses up and force it through them, right? So I just take her neck to the side, keep that leg on, keep clucking, keep encouraging her to move her feet, because in her world, if you go back to basics, in her world, whoever moves the feet is the leader, right? So that was a red-headed mare telling me she's gonna be the leader right there, right? <laughs> and I'm telling her, you're not the leader. I control your feet. So see, I didn't take that button away until she gave me her legs. And now I have a horse that works through that, gives me this button now, right? Give me this button so that we can go back to work, right? Because remember, we did this button originally to try to get a lope off. And we ran into an attitude along the way. So we're going to address the attitude. Got to get the attitude out of there. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, what happened? Oh, wait, wrong one question. When you say your head is upside down, what exactly do you mean by that? Uh, if you look at the way her neck is muscled, see this big, there, bulgy muscle right there? Right? Lots <laughs> of buddy. muscle under here and not much over here, right? So remember, we want to create a horse whose neck is arched down, right? So I want the muscle to be here and taper down up there. She has a long neck, so when she does like stretch down, it's really pretty. Super pretty. It's gorgeous. Yeah. She just got to learn how to carry it. Yep, go ahead. And then what happens if you have a horse that feels like he wants to run through your hands when you have contact like that? Sideways, right? So this horse, that's what I was saying, she started pulling on me. And you have to remember, it's not usually their face that's pulling on you. Look how soft she is in her face, right? She's super soft in her jaw. That's just one, like I can come here and just bump this. She's really soft in her face, right? So usually what you have is your shoulders are the ones pulling on you. This is what's pulling on you. This leg stepping forward is what's really pulling on you. So when I was loping around right there, because this leg is stepping forward, she feels heavy in my hands. So what I've got to do is take her and make her go sideways with her legs so she starts to come up <laughs> under me to get her move, her legs moving. I think all the girls are in heat. <laughs> oh yeah, I get these legs moving just like this, right? And then lope up right here. So now I got my outside on. Nope. <laughs> push, this around, push this around, lope up. Nope, she missed it. Come around, got my outside on. She's not paying attention, there. See, get it on my feet, right? Pay attention, right here. Good lope off, much better. Much better. See, she can do it, but like we talked about, you don't know that until you do like six of them, right? That was my fourth or fifth lope off in that little series. So, and that's the best one I had, so I can reward her for that by not breaking her down, by letting her loaf around. But see how I work through that crankiness and I can still work on this horse. I still got a mind there to work on. She's not frustrated, she's not mad at me. She was mad at the time, but she's figuring out you gotta give to me, right? You gotta give to me. So this is the same maneuver I was doing just like five minutes ago, loafing this horse around, close my outside, stand his shoulder up, get over your back end. Set her down. Stand her up. Stand everything up. Set her down. Go straight. Good. Good. Wrap her off. Reach down pat her. Okay? So the big thing about that is I'm not making my correction a punishment. If I make it a punishment, she's not going to keep trying for me. Right? She's gonna get upset at me and she's gonna quit and I'm gonna have to spend time fixing the fix, right? I'm gonna have to spend time working on getting her to accept my corrections. We can't have that, right? So we gotta have a horse that'll let us come in and let us help her, all right? So see how I'll just ignore the long haul. I know you'd rather be in the past. That is just work. You just have to do that by beating them through it. It's now in the world. Yep. And yep. instead of fight with us. We're gonna have a really nice horse on our hands. <laughs> giving it up, right? You haven't. Right? For me, giving it up is achieved through that stuff.
right? It's everything I can do. Like those horses coming in, that was a great opportunity to train on her because she made a big mistake there. Right? right. So it's all about finding mistakes. I let her make the mistake. I just worked through it, right? So I'm gonna work this left side. We'll push her hips around a little bit. And you'll see, like we already know she's gonna be bad, right? Because we've seen her kick out this foot a lot, right? We've seen her get mad about this leg. So that's in there already. We know that going into it. So we're gonna just work through it slowly, okay? Good. Um, Melissa said, if you have a young horse that picked up the wrong lead, how would you recommend correcting? Pushing to the outside and catching on your leg? Yep. Yep. Push the outside, catch on the leg, and then open your hands up and start on a circle, right? Start out here. Like if I want my right lead, my hands need to look like this, all right? If you can get them to where to lope off, they're out here, and you can lope off like this and tap this inside leg, you'd be in really good shape for your leads. Um, my horse doesn't like to give his hips. What exercise can I do for him? Here we are. We're gonna do it right now. <laughs> All right, so we want to create softness and willingness in our hips. Now her to the she to the right, she gives her hips up pretty good. All right, she doesn't challenge my outside foot much at all, but you've seen her kick out this right spur a lot today, whether it was my ribs or whatever. So you're gonna see her be just as naughty about her hips here. Okay, so we'll see what she looks like. We're gonna push you're this welcome. down. We want to start with just a couple steps. All right, so right here. Now, she's giving me her shoulder. You see how she's not crossed her back legs around? I want her to cross her back legs. So I want contact with her shoulder right here. I'm not gonna like make her shoulder stay still. I just wanna stay in until she gives me her hip, okay? So she's giving me a lot of her shoulder. We just worked on that, so it's understandable. When there. you, um, question. Yep. When you have a horse that lunges on the incorrect lead, do you try to fix that? Push him out, all right? Lunging on the incorrect lead means your legs are over here like this. Where's your weight? If you're staying here like this, you're going to the left. Your weight's on this leg right here. So push them out of the circle and get their weight on the outside legs, which just so happens to be the same thing we're doing under saddle all the time. Right. Get them to carry their weight on their outside legs, and then she'll pick her lead up on the inside. If she's on her wrong lead loping around, she's got her ribs falling down, she's got all of her weight over here. So I'm gonna push them out of the circle. It's the same thing we're doing under saddle right here. Right. So push the hip around again. And see, like, there's horses coming in, and she's not worried about them anymore. Because she learned that that didn't do her any good, right? So right here, then I catch. I want to shuffle her in, and then I'm out. Pat her. Okay? This is how all of our horses started, right here. Good girl. Lick and chew, perfect. We're going to walk up again, walk forward. We're going to push our hip around again. So I'm going to slide down by an outside hand. Put my outside spur on right here. Slide down my outside hand. Get that neck moving. Right here. There's that elevation in my neck. That just means we got trapped up in our belly. Right here, she's giving me her shoulder. She's kind of side passing around there. There's her hip. Catch. Sit. See how I have this leg connected? Can you see that? So even when I catch, see that leg being connected right there? I want her to sit on that spur right there. Sit on that. And then I drop out. Good girl. And take the pressure away. All right? So when I go to push this hip around, leg comes on move away from pressure. When I catch her back over here, sit on some pressure. Don't do this. Push your hip around like this. Push your hip, push your hip, push your hip. And then catch and do this. Right. Because your next step is gonna be right back over there. She's gonna go right back into where your leg was. So we wanna teach her to stay and maintain off the pressure. Go ahead. Philip said, what a good horse to show all of, the pro all of these problems. Yeah. Yeah, she's really good up front. Like, she just does not like to get her hips up. Yep, yep. So she's a really good example of what we do for that. Well, she's super talented. She's got stuff to learn. That's all. So right here, push this around. So now I'm pushing her. She's getting a little bit heavy up front. There. So you see, I like her better walk in that circle rather than like a turn of the forehand. I don't want her to pivot. That was really good. I like that. Yeah, that so really I bring good. everything back in. I got a place in mind that I'm headed towards. Then I drop out, reach down, pet her. Okay. So now... That I have that. Notice how if I if I lose motion, you'll see me tap my left leg right here. Okay? I'm pushing my hips around my right leg. That leg's busy. That leg's got a job. So I can't push, I can't kick with that leg to get her moving. So that's when I cluck and I wave my left leg at her and I say, hey, get up right here. There's my kick out. So we're gonna dress that. We're gonna push this around. Right here. Push it around, catch. And now walk up on the pressure. There, get out. Got a couple steps walking forward. Go ahead. 
Uh, Jasmine said, what if they won't walk the circle? Like this? No, like when you're doing your hip around. Oh, oh. Uh, so if they're heavy up front, basically? Yep. So think about like what happens when they pivot, right? When they pivot on their front end, she's got all of her weight right here. And that would be your outside front loping, which would make sense given that your horses are kind of falling forward, right? So if they won't walk a circle, then I got to work on my ribs right here. And we, like, we see how much rib control I have on this horse. So I slide my leg forward. I'm in the middle of her body now. And now I take the weight off her right front, okay? So I have a way to keep the weight off of her right front so I can keep doing this, okay? So now, once I get there, I want to walk forward with my right leg on, right here, dropping her neck down, keeping everything soft right here, then I'm out, right there, okay? So we're pushing around again. So push. Catch. I got my head flipped up that time. All right? So what did she do? She hollowed out her back. Okay? There she's walking forward. It's not real pretty. There I'm out. And see all the repetition I'm getting in here, right? Tons of repetition. Push this hip around. But see, like I'll put my left hand right on their neck. Catch. And then I bring my right hand to their neck. Okay? Good. Uh, Vicky said, what is your advice to the horse that takes a hold of the bit, a snaffle, when they take, when you take his head to the left, but it doesn't do it to the right, or in a curb bit? Um, keep working your neck side to side, right? If she's going to take the bit like that, this horse does it too. She's going to take the bit away from me, take the power away by coming and getting this moving, right? By, by taking this neck away and getting your wither moving, she can't jut her jaw on me anymore. Right? She can't push against me like that. So the secret really is how I'm using my hands. All right? So that when I push her around right here, I got my left hand on her neck, and I'm pushing this hip around. I'm open over here. Right? And I know it's <laughs> it looks like a little cone head. Yeah. So right here, I'm pushing this hip around. But when I catch, I'm just trading like this. So now this hand comes to her neck right here, and this hand comes back. Because I want her to stay lined up. All right? So if I was coming at you guys, I'll push this hip around. Here's my left hand on her neck, catch, right hand on her neck, left hand straight back. See how everything's lined up to you? So then from here, I've got her contact on this ring, so this right shoulder stays up and back to me. My left hand can stay open, I want to walk forward up into this. Good, just like that, right? And this will become that lope off that Dubs is doing, right? It becomes that. Okay, so right here, perfect. Now, stop, back up. Weight off your front end, get off your front end, get off your front end. Then push my hip. Hand on her neck, this hand out wide. Catch to the fence. Straight ahead. Straight ahead, leg is on. Get it off. Better. Okay, so that's how it's going to start for you guys. All right? That's absolutely how it's going to start. So push that hip around, get her walking forward. Don't worry about the lope off yet, right? So if you're telling me, you go home, you do this with your horses, you tell me, well, my horse doesn't really lope out of that position, right? That's because it's harder. It's a lot harder, right? So if they don't lope out of that position, it's because it's so much harder to lope out of there, right? It will be much easier for her in the end. She'll be able to use her body much more athletically. But in the beginning here, if you can't get them to pick up, right, then that lope off is way harder than the one where you just run forward, right? Way harder than the one where you just run off. So make sure you understand, I'm putting her in a tougher position. So yeah, she should probably fr get frustrated, right? Right there, push around. She's gonna kick out my foot, push, catch. Done. But see how like you don't hear me getting worked up, right? Hips are hard, right? They're not gonna love it. I've never met one that loves it. Right? But you gotta have willingness. So stay soft up here and make sure you reward them for being good. Go ahead. Do you wanna show them the push and catch on the ground? Like yeah, you, well, you doing done. it? Okay, yep. perfect. Yep, we're done. Uh, so then I'll take that maneuver and I'm, I'm never gonna have this like 100% fixed before I go low, right? You're gonna get this over time. So you're gonna push this around. You're gonna catch. I'm gonna trot off. See how I trotted out? There we go. See how I trotted out and kept my right leg on? I didn't kick with it, I just kept it on. Then I'm gonna drop out. Okay? I'm gonna turn the corner. 
And what that's going to do for me is give me the ability to start pushing my hip right here. So now I can set her up and she stays off this right leg. See that shape right there? Stays off that right leg, got my hip on the inside, drop out. Right? And that's what I'm going to create next is a horse that I can move around. Now my job. Right. So right here. I'm going to go from the back so you can see. Yep. Got my hands up square, right leg on, hip over. Down this line. There's the kick out. <laughs> I'm baiting her into making that mistake. So I'm gonna come back here. We're gonna go back down to our walk. We're gonna walk this around nice and calm. We're gonna catch it back up. Nope, she's looking off and she walks forward. So we're gonna take this around again. Push it around. Catch. Back up to a jump. Nope, that's loping. Oh, I'll just bend it around. I clocked. You gotta try. Right? So this is not lope yet. She tried to tip over left there, so I'm gonna push this over. Right, rib control on both sides. Right there. So that I can keep her up on the right leg. Right there. There, perfect. See her drop in? That's straight and square with everything. And see that neck soft and relaxed down in there. That's what I want. Now I can switch to here. Keep her off my right leg. Keep her up off my left leg. Right in there. Then I'm out. Good girl. Very good. Let's try it again. Right here. drive your hinds towards your face. That's all. That'll go away as she gets more broke. Right? As she gets more broke, that'll go away. Right? So right here, we're gonna lope her off. Set her up, push her out, onto her right legs, wrap my outside leg, lope off. Good. So there's that root, right? Juts her jaw on me. You're gonna get that for a while until your horse is soft in their belly. So I'm loping along. She's keeping her hip nice and under the inside. That's what I want. So I'm here riding along. If she gets too heavy in my hands, then I'll break her down and start pushing her body around. If she's gonna be soft, I'll let her practice. So now she's starting to spin her hip out. Can you see that in the video? She's starting to spin her hip out of my circle. This is gonna be a big problem for you guys. Get behind me, Mace. Yep. You guys see me come around. Stay there. Okay. When I make this corner, this hip should be on the inside. It says not. It's trying to drift out, like right now you'll see it. Right there. See her spin out? Yeah. That back end's kind of bouncy. If she opens up her hips to the inside, that bounce will go away. Right? So I'm loping around here. I'm loping along. She's kind of heavy in my hand. I'm going to break her down. So I'll just pull her over here. Break her down. Push this rib, break this neck off, shuffling my hands real soft, breaking her in, right there. Set her back up. Let's look again. Good. Good. Much better. And see, like she's gonna surge and come undone, unwound, and that's okay. She's gotta learn how to use her legs, right? She's gotta learn how to use her legs. So I'm loping along here. I'm waiting for her to push her hip against my foot, right? Waiting for her to challenge my right leg. She's not, so I'm gonna keep loping. Got my right leg connected. I'll loop in front of you so you can see that. Perfect. You have a couple questions in. Yep. Right leg is connected to this horse. Right there, loop my line. Drop your phone. I see that. <laughs> right? So if I'm loping along and I like it, I'll make the circle harder. Roll over your hips. Right here, drive up. Right here, loping along, tight circle. Now I'm keeping my hand open, making a wall on the right side, bring my right elbow to me. Keep this left hand soft and open. There's a push on my foot. So I'm pushing around. Calmly. She's rushing. I'm gonna stay in. She's nervous now, right? She's worried about this direction. I'm gonna stay in. So she relaxes through it, slows her legs down, thinks her way through. Catch, right there. Walk up, nice and relaxed. Lope again. Good lope off. There, put her legs together. I like it. Much better. Lope along. My head is up, but my back is down, so I know that.
that's going to happen, right? Until this horse learns to come up on my feet, there, learns to come up on my feet, that neck is going to be up. I just want to provide a pathway for it to drop down. And just keep your hands moving so it's not something she can brace against. Just you can't hang against my hands. Just real soft, set your hands forward, take a hold. Drive up. So I took a hold and she wasn't ready for it. She gave me a kiss. Drive everything back up to your face. Keep everything moving up. There's my hip spinning out right there. So I'm going to come around here. There's the spinning out. See that? Yep. You guys, horse can do this. Yeah. Bounce behind like that and spin out. So I'm pushing around. I'm going to say respect this pressure right here. Get off this pressure. Get off, get off, get off this pressure. Push. Catch. Straight ahead. Low bump. Good, low bump. Good. Good. Counter cannon. Come off this pressure. That's what it'll start like. So you guys saw dubs. That's what it starts like right there. Come around, tight corner. Set her on her butt, set her on her back in. Drive everything up. When you tighten that circle down, kiss, kiss, kiss. Drive everything up right here. Make her work hard for it. Right in there. There. Then set her down, let her do something easy. Come around, she, I've set her down, she left with her shoulders. So I'll take her back onto a circle. Right here. Set her down, where does she go? Is she soft? No, she left. Let's come up and around. Let's work off her back in. Good, pat her. Set her down. Practice. Back to feet down here. Outside leg on. Lift and pull that horse up to me. There. Outside leg on. Lift, pull that belly up to me. Nope. Push it around. And see how quick I call that. So you kick out, I'm gonna push it around. Catch. Move her up. Good. See how I let her think her way through that one? That one is a great example of thinking your way through a low bump right there. I didn't rush her. Just bounce my, my, my seat and kiss. As long as she doesn't trot off, I'm going to let her take that one. Lift it along here. Right leg pressure. Lift, 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 lift. Stay. So she comes back down to earth. There. <laughs> Hold. Pressure. Lift, lift, lift. Good. Now. Right. Hold. Pressure. Lift, 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 lift. Pressure there, out. Hold, pressure, lift, 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 round, lift, round, lift, round. That looks much in. better. Lift, round, lift, round, lift, round, lift, round. Pressure, stay in. Keep the pressure, keep everything moving, keep everything in motion. Stay soft, out. Good, back up. That's a workout right there. Okay, this horse is very sweaty, but not nervous, not scared. Okay, lots of questions, I'm sure. Yeah, here, there's three right there. Jamie and I'll give you that. Thank you. Yep. That's good. It's much softer at the end. Yeah, way better. Way better. All right. I know he knows it's running. <laughs> Wind. It's so windy. Um. Okay, how much pressure am I using on my inside leg when I push your hip? Just enough my inside leg. So I'm pushing your hip with this leg. Here's the pressure on this side. When I walk forward, it's just tapping. This leg's free because I want these legs to be free, right? I want these legs to be in motion, stepping forward. I want these legs to be solid in a shape. So this leg, my outside leg, when I push your hip, is pushing so she gradually moves around. Right? My inside stays really soft so that these legs stay free and stepping this way. Because right? what you saw when I was loping around, when she started getting bracy and started pushing against my foot, they start to bunny hop behind. Right? And their stride gets short and choppy. Right? That's braciness right through here. That she's braced up in her belly. So this leg's going to stay soft to keep that braciness from coming in there. All right? Um, when actual Western Plaza training starts, do you trot, uh, lope on the trot or mostly the walk? The walk, yep. You want to get rid of uh, your lope from a trot as much as possible so that they learn to pop up. 
all right? I think it's too easy for them to get that way and trot off into the sunset. Then when you go to lope off, they can't, right? Because they're going forward. I want her to learn, and that's, that's basically what we're setting up for that, is pushing your hip around and stepping up in the air, right? So that everything comes up and then my legs lope underneath of it, all right? So that lope off is gonna come more from a standstill for a long time so that she doesn't learn to go forward through that transition. She learns to come up. Um, yeah, Jojo, huge improvement, right? Much different at the end than where I started. Absolutely. Yeah, she looks so much better this way. Yep. Yes, much better, Holly. Do you want to show them the hip around on the ground that they can practice? Yeah. Yep. Just want to make sure there's nothing else on the horse. Yep. Um, uh, my horse lopes off. When she stops, she drops her neck down and noses out, takes the reins. Give it to her. Right? If you guys missed that, bits and <laughs> had the bits and reins demo when I dropped Macy right on her butt. <laughs> you did. Right? Give it to her. Let her take it. All right? Or, alternatively, um, if you don't want to let her take the reins out of your hands, let her just slide and take it as far as she wants to take it and then back her up, right? So what you have to remember is she's leaning into pressure and it's her shoulders most likely that are leaning, right? So if her shoulders are gonna lean away from me, when she goes to stop, I could stop her like taking her head to the side like this. That's how every horse of mine learns to stop in the beginning, right? I'm gonna break that neck off to the side. So I'm gonna just do a cowboy one rein stop them in the beginning. And what that does, and that's what we're telling you guys all the time, Keep them from taking their neck away from you by taking their head to the side. This takes all the power away. So my stops are gonna be loping along like this, loping, 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 slide, whoa, and back them up a step or two, all right? Until they stop moving their feet. So I'm gonna get rid of the forward and I'm gonna take the power away from her neck by getting this piece in my hands, all right? In order to do that, they gotta line all this up and shove everything forward. So either one of two things, either open your hands up and don't give them something to lean on, Right, so that they take those reins, they just pull them right out of your hands and then just gather those reins up and back them up and then do some turning. So she doesn't learn to lean all over you. Right, so right here, backing, right here, turning, just like this. So that horse doesn't learn to lean on you, okay? Very good. Jamie said much, much better. She's a great horse to the hip around, nice improvement in the end. Yep. Yeah, she had a huge improvement in the end. Yep, and that's what we're looking for, right? And you can see that like within what, 15 minutes? Yeah. You can see a change. But if you were to get aggressive, I assure you, a horse like this, if you get aggressive with, you will not finish better than you started. Right. Right? And that's the biggest thing I want everybody to understand. This horse, if she doesn't do it right, it's a choice, right? It's not because she doesn't feel you. She feels a fly land right here and she can shake that muscle. She feels you. She chooses not to do it right. So I'm just up here helping her make good choices, all right? You'll hear me say that through all of my lessons and my rides. Make good choices, right? We're gonna lope off, make good choices. Choose to do it right. If you're gonna do it wrong, we're gonna do it again, right? Very good. I lost my chat. All right, perfect. Do you wanna show him on the ground? Yeah. All right here, we wanna hold this. Just hold that so you can see Jeremy. Mm-hmm. Almost her. Yeah. <laughs> Pull away. I know, I know. Shoot. Okay, so what we're doing, and I want you guys to be able to practice this at home on the ground, all right? So that you can feel that weight transfer, okay? So what I want you to do is you're gonna sit on your horses. Hopefully everybody at home watches this on our TV. <laughs> you guys are sitting on your horses, right? You're right here, weight's balanced between all your feet, okay? We're gonna take our hands, we're gonna put the reins together. We're gonna slide out to the side. We're gonna pull this hand out wide, all right? This pull right here, if you have this hand out to the side, you let that rein slide through your finger, that pull across there is gonna take your head to the side. Right? That's, what's, that's what breaks her off to the side is when this hand opens up. Right? So when I push her around, I slide here, pull this out here, look how wide my hands are. Because right? I want to ride that horse between my feet. Okay? So I'm right here, push this horse around, right there. Okay? So you're out here, push, got my leg back. I want that horse to move in motion and time with me. Right? So right here, push this around, then catch. And shift your weight onto your back end. Okay, but look at my hands. I'm right here, push around. This hand can stay on her neck right here like this. Push around, push around. And then this part right here is the secret. This hand comes right here, all right? Because I want that neck to stay down and roll across like that, all right? So that trade of my hands as I come back around is the key. So I'm here, push, catch, all right? See that loop that I make with this hand? Loop that around, loop, loop. Okay, push, catch, right there. Now I'm set up to go straight ahead, 
All right? So I'm gonna push, catch, straight. Push, catch, straight. Do you see I have that hip over? So when you're practicing on the ground, get this leg underneath of you. Because when you're sitting on your horse, that leg's gonna be underneath you because that hip is making that hockey stick shape under you, All right? So I'm sitting in the middle of that hockey stick, okay? This leg is underneath of me right here. It's sitting with that hip on the side. Get comfortable moving in this shape right here. See my hips, my shoulders, everything pointed to you guys, right? Push, catch, straight. Push, push, catch, straight. See how this, everything goes this way. What will happen to a lot of people, their horses, if you send them to a trainer, most likely your horse is gonna go sideways with its hip, right? What that's gonna look like is you're gonna push your hip around, you're gonna catch and go this way. All right? So I'll, I'll come straight to you guys so you can see that. That's why it's so important to have something in mind of where you're going once you push. Keep your eyes up as you push your horse around. Okay? Right? So I'm here, push, catch, straight, push, catch, straight, push, catch, straight. All right? What that would look like is I would be here, push, catch. See how I went this way? That's not straight. That's the importance of your inside leg. If your inside leg isn't there to hold them up, right? I want them sitting on this leg and tapping this one to go straight, all right? So I'm gonna be here, push. If you do nothing with this leg, if this is my leg, right? What your horse is gonna do is go like this and fall off to the side, right? And what that would look like for everybody, if you come down here with me, Kel. Our show, if you want to come right in front. Can you see the rail? Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So this is you at the show if your horse does that out there. You're right here. You go set up for a lope off. Your horse sets up. And it goes like this. And you go, shoot. You hold your hand over here. Now I'm loping into the fence, right? So my horse, I'm going to be showing it. It's going to look like this all the time. Right? They just keep tipping over to the inside. So it's so important when you come out of that, you push, so if you're here, push, catch, straight ahead with everything. They gotta drive their legs straight from their hip. Everything's gotta go this way, all right? So if you're not blocking the inside with your calf or tapping your foot, then your horse is gonna tip over, you're gonna catch your hip, and you're gonna be doing this. So it's really important to have something in mind that you're looking at that you're walking straight to. And one of the best ways to get this is to set up a camera on a tripod, push and catch and walk straight to it, or have a friend on the ground, all right? Macy and I worked together to figure this out, yeah. that we'd push and catch and walk towards each other and she would say straight, not straight, tipping over, left, right, and just do this with your hands, right? Just this or this, say hey, over here or over here, keep that horse squared up, all right? You wanna get to where when you square it up, your outside rein has strong, solid contact, inside can stay open and bump out here. That's where you wanna get to. But what will happen is, if you can't do this because your horse tips over, you're missing this, yep. leg control, all right? So if you're if you're nervous to try it on your horse, get comfortable with the maneuver right there. Yeah, you should have it gone for a little while. Yep, so you can start to feel the weight transfer you're looking for. But see how I don't just plant this foot? I don't want my horse to just plant this right here, all right? So it's not this that I'm trying to get. And pivot around this inside front leg because your horse can get too heavy up front. So when I push, keeping everything moving, keep my weight moving. See how I just walk my legs around? And you'll see how when I do that, everything's gonna walk off much easier. If I let that horse get heavy and plant their inside front, most of the time what happens is they won't be able to walk or lope out of it. Or if they do lope off because all their weight's right here, they're gonna go and jump through it. Okay. She's like, I see the grass over there. <laughs> yeah. Very good. That was good. Very They're good. Awesome. Any questions, comments, concerns? Um, it's so important to have someone on the ground. What's going on? That was, thank you so much. Always learning. Awesome. Thank awesome. you for being here. Yeah, your eyes on the ground are hugely important. Yeah. Hugely that helps important. helps a lot. You have to have someone on the ground that understands. Yeah. All right? And you'll make so much progress so much faster. Yeah. Um, for me, it was years and years and years of riding in front of mirrors. Yeah. And a lot of recording. You yep. Did. A lot of videoing. 
um, riding in front of mirrors, trying to get um, get a, a feel for what it looked like, so right. I can explain it to somebody. Right. Right. So that way I can come out here and teach Macy how to do it, and you see the video when I was yeah. going to Idaho, and she's doing the same thing. Yeah. Right. So it's um it's having horses and riders that understand the process, right? So it's just years of practice and, yeah. and seeing it in front of a mirror, having somebody on the ground say right, wrong, right? But it's important to have someone on the ground tell you that it looks good, that it yep. looks wrong, yep. or if that was bad or anything. And even between the two of us, I noticed like, she's really good at getting one to lope straight and like keep honest on a line. Really good at that. But she had me on the ground helping her. Yeah, I had you the whole time. So she doesn't know what that feels like to be wrong now because she's like, shoot, I've spent so many hours out here with you telling me where straight is right. that you make them look straighter than I do. Yeah, well, it's because I had you on the ground. Because I was on the ground for her, right? So keeping that in mind, like, the person on the ground is going to get an understanding of how a horse moves, and the person on the saddle is going to get the technique down. For sure. Yep. yep. So it's good to trade back and forth, right? If you it guys is. have people to ride with. I know, I have to help his guys. I'm like, yep. I, I don't know. <laughs> yep. But, like, if you have, if you have your non-horse husbands out there helping you guys out, uh. um, or your, your girlfriends that aren't into horses, right? Mm -hmm. Or just a mom or a friend. Yeah. Just say, are my legs flying straight out of my shoulders? And they'll be able to tell. Yep. yep. Say, hey, just let me know if my legs start doing this or if I go to walk off and one leg does this yeah. and just falls out until you develop a feel for what a horse is going this way. That way. Yep. Right? Because I would say that's probably the biggest problem that I see are horses that travel over here. Yes, if you, Jasmine, you can send a video over today. So yeah. Yep. Or try, send it over. Yeah, please. Um, and like, all angles are good, right? Profile is good, and so is like Kel was videoing me walking straight at you. That's a great angle to really get an idea, right? Ah! You just don't have much time, right? The person doing the camera is gonna run backwards. Um, but if you walk at the camera, like shoot some video of you pushing it around, and then have that person stand in front of you, push it around, catch, try to walk straight towards them. Because that's gonna do two things for you. One, we're gonna be able to see what your horse needs and what you're not giving them. And two, you're gonna have something to aim for, but, yeah. right? You gotta have something to aim at. And I would say that that's probably the bigger problem that most people have is they don't aim at something. Right. Right? Uh, no, we usually don't ride nose bands. Nope, nope. And like this horse especially, she wants to invert her neck, right? She wants to come above that bit. There's zero chance I'm tying her head shut. Yeah. Cause that's one less area she can get away, yep. right? I don't mind her gapping her mouth to evade the bit right now, right? I what I don't want is I don't want her to do that to evade the bit. All right. So if I tie her mouth shut, all the getting away that she was doing back with her mouth is going to happen in her neck, right. guaranteed. Yeah, for right? sure. So that to me is just taking shortcuts. She's got enough on her plate already. Yep. She's already told me this is hard, so there's no reason to make it harder by make tying her harder. mouth shut. Yep. 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 Oh, it's windy. So I would say that a nose band would be like much later on down the road, but like I think if your horse is chomping at the bit, he's nervous about something. Right. So figure it out. Right. Don't just tie his mouth shut because you can't tie it shut in a show. No. Right? So if my horse is chomping the mouth and he's gapping and all this, he needs to be handled more so he learns to trust my hands. Because right. I can't show in a nose band, so it doesn't do me any good to tie it shut at home. Right. He's going to get away with it at the show. Right. Right? And that's usually the horses that you see going along. And that tension is going to show up somewhere. So most likely if they can't show off their tension here, they show it off up here. Right? And they just like chomp and they're tight in their jaw. I want that jaw to be relaxed. Right? She, she's really relaxed in her jaw she though. She foams. Yeah, yeah, she foams. She like is super relaxed in her jaw. Yep. Which yep. is nice. <laughs> Anything else? Um, let me look. Um, I put the camera up on a cone today. Nothing yeah. single but I tried. Awesome. Noted. Perfect. Love watching and learning from your live videos. You are awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Very that good. Was stepping into me. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> awesome. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Um, Macy has a test tonight. We do another test. Human anatomy test tonight. <laughs> so depending on how that goes, what time we finish up, we'll be live. Yep. If we're not live tonight, we'll be live tomorrow. We'll be live tomorrow. Yep. Yep. So we'll just watch. <laughs> yep, just watch for us and you'll see us. Um, so yeah, if this helps, feel free to share it, send it around. Um, these videos are free for you guys, so we'll uh, we'll keep growing this, we'll keep showing up. Yeah, and we're close to 150 on our Patreon page, so. Yes, the mission is 150, so I think we're at 116 or 117. Advice for shooting a video by yourself. Um, buy a tripod. A little tripod, put up on like a tripod. Yep, buy a tripod. Support, yep. Or a drone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just tripods aren't too expensive though. Like you can get one, um, just a little short one for like 20 bucks. And just set it up on a hay bale and just video it, right? Yeah, or if you have like a fence, you can put it on yep. anything. Anything. Just rest it on something. But they make just short little tripods now, especially with like influencers all the time. Yep. So they might be sold out. Yeah, we tried getting a tripod, but they were sold out. But yep. I don't yep. know if your grocery stores would have them. Yeah, other than that, just a little tripod. Or you can shoot some vertical video, which I don't like, but you could. You could, yeah. You could just set it in a fence or like 
sandwich it between two things, set it up. Yeah, that always yeah. works too. Yeah. Perfect. Try to avoid vertical video. Yeah, I know, he doesn't like those. <laughs> Movie theaters are short and wide. <laughs> Movie theaters are tall and long. Vertical video would make sense. The, yeah, it you need them wide. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Very good. Well, Thank good guys. rides, guys. I hope you uh, hope this helps you guys see some of our problems and some things that we work through. If good anything, course. if you take away anything, we want a relaxed, confident horse. Yep. You will never get that by being aggressive with your hands and feet. No. Never, ever, ever in a million years get that by being aggressive. So if you want that softness across the ground, so you want that horse that yeah. comes out here and is willing and soft, you got to be soft yourself. Okay. Awesome. Very good, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Thank Jeremy. You. I'm Macy. This is this, Piper. <laughs> this is Piper. This is LSH Live. We'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.